Good evening, everyone. I understand the night's getting long, so I'll try not to take up too much more of your time. As mentioned, my name is Amanda Eisner, and tonight I'm going to talk to you about how two completely opposite facts can both be true in any given situation. So I'd like to start with a scenario. Now we've all seen a traffic light. In fact, I'm sure a lot of you passed a few on your way here this evening. But let's pretend for a moment that when you were younger, your parents wanted to do a little experiment on you. And they told you that that is what you call red, and that is what you call green. Well, now this is going to make your driver's test a little interesting. But let's just skip past all that and pretend that you got your driver's license. So now you're out on the road one day, and you end up running a red light and you get pulled over. So the police officer says, you know, do you realize you just ran a red light? But you say, no, officer, that light was green. What are you talking about? So was the light green or was the light red? Well, it depends who you ask. And that's what brings me to my main point this evening, the fact that our truths are based off of our senses and the two very different things can both be equally true simply by switching the perspective. And later I'd like to get into how law enforcement determine what they believe to be true by taking all different perspectives from a situation. So how do we know what we know? That seems like a very broad question, but I'm going to try to focus it in on just our perspective. In the background, I'm going to have images scrolling through that show you how by simply switching perspectives, you can see two different images from one picture. So when we perceive things, we're potentially using all five of our senses. Like in my first example, that was our sight, our vision, what we see. So for my second example, I'd like to focus on hearing. To start this one, I'll give you the classic riddle. If a tree falls in the woods, but no one's around to hear it, does it make a noise? Well, of course it makes a noise, right? Roots don't just rip out of the ground silently. But what if you're deaf? Then it doesn't matter how close to this tree you are or what it does, it's not going to make a noise. Let's say you're at the zoo. Everyone's running away, holding their ears, complaining that lions are making too much noise. But you're deaf, so you don't hear a thing. They're true in saying that the lions are being very loud. But you are also true when you say that they're not making a noise because you don't hear anything. So which is it? Are the lions making a noise or aren't they? It depends who you ask. So I've talked about sight, and I've talked about hearing. So what about feelings? And I don't mean to touch, I mean our emotions, how we feel. Sure, we've all felt sad, and sure, we've all felt happy. But have we felt the same sad, or the same happy? Do you know what I mean when I say I've had a tremendous day, but I feel exhausted? No, you know your version of that. Maybe for you, feeling exhausted means that you just ran a marathon and now you're panting and your muscles are tired. But for me, being exhausted means I just studied physics for five hours. <laughs> Two completely different physical feelings. Your muscles sore, my brain sore. Both represented by the same emotional word, exhausted. Just because I tell you that I'm happy doesn't necessarily mean you know how I feel. And just because I tell you that I'm sad doesn't necessarily mean you know how I feel. You haven't necessarily felt my happy or sad, or anyone else's happy or sad. You can relate to a feeling, and you can empathize with a feeling, but you can never feel something the exact same way that somebody else does. But this doesn't make your feelings any less true. The way you perceived your feelings is what makes it true. So what does it mean to truly be happy? That depends on who you ask. And this is what brings me into what I really wanted to talk about, which was the world of crime, which really interests me. And I've always wondered why police officers feel the need to question everyone in a given situation. Because realistically, in a perfect world, they could just ask the people involved in an incident and find the truth. But instead, they ask everyone around for everyone's different perception. And I now believe that they do this because everyone perceives things so differently. And when they ask all these different questions to all these different people, 
they can better construct what would have actually taken place as we all see things differently. But we all see things, see things similarly enough that you can find a common link in them to determine what really happened. Just as no two snowflakes are identical, neither is our perception. We don't see things in the same light, at the same time, or from the same angle. We don't hear things the same way. Our ears all take in sound waves differently. We don't taste or smell things the same. And we certainly don't experience emotions in the same way. But that doesn't make one person's perception any more valid than anyone else's. Your perception will always differ from someone else's, but you will always be true, as will they. So is this Wolverine or two Batman? It depends who you ask. Thank you.